I'm Daniel Ehrenberg, and I, I work in TC39, and I came here to tell you about Bigint. But first, let's talk about numbers. Uh, math.pow is this function that can take a number to a particular power. So here, x will be 2 to the 53rd power. Actually, now you can just write 2 to the star star 53. So what does that equal, this huge number starting with a 9 and ending with a 2? Uh, what do you get when you add 1 to that? So this 2 to the 53 plus 1? The same number back, this huge number starting with a 9, ending with a 2. What? What's going on? Uh, so in this talk, I'll tell you about why numbers do this, uh, how we can fix this using BigInt, uh, and how TC39 has been developing BigInt in partnership with the JavaScript community, and how you can get involved to, to shape the next version of JavaScript. I really want your help in all of this. Uh, we can't do it without you. Uh, so first about numbers. Numbers in JavaScript are 64-bit floats, floating point binary uh, numbers. So that's basically like scientific notation. Remember from grade school, 30,000 you could represent as 3 times 10 to the 5. And here the exponent would be 5, the sign is positive 1, and the fraction is 3. And uh, IEEE 754 floating point numbers are just like that except it's base 2 instead of base 10. So we have the sign, which is 1 bit, and we have the exponent, which is 11 bits, and the fraction, and 52 bits. <clears throat> so our, our friend 2 to the 53rd power looks like this when you put it in a, in a floating point. It, sign is 0 to represent positive 1. The exponent is that, that number starting with a 1, and the, the fraction is all zeros. It has an implicit sort of 1 point before the zeros. The next biggest number is actually that ending with a 4. If you look at the last digits, uh, the last digit of this number ending in a 2 is 0, and the last digit of the 1 ending in 1 is 1. There's actually no numbers in between. When I say number, I mean these binary floating point numbers. Ultimately, if we're representing something in 64 bits, there's only 2 to the 64 different bit patterns. So we can't represent every single actual number that exists in the world, or every single integer even. At some point, we have to round or go up to infinity or have an error. Uh, but this seems like a pretty random edge case. Does this ever actually come up in practice? It, it turns out it does. So in, in Twitter's API, there's an ID field. Uh, stuff like tweets are represented by JSON objects. And uh, the ID that you get over the network might look like this, this big number ending in 888. Uh, the thing is, when, when you parse that in JavaScript, uh, it gets converted to a number. So the 888 rounds to 900. Uh, for this reason, Twitter includes a secondary field, ID string, which is, uh, which is a string of the number. And that doesn't round. But people run into this as a problem all the time. Like, it's kind of easier to just use the ID rather than the ID string. And it's hard for Twitter to remove it because of compatibility. Sometimes the numbers don't overflow, like in that second line in this bug. But other times they do. And you just are referring to the wrong object. Uh, another case this comes up is in inode numbers. So, in file systems, each file is generally associated with, with a number, which is sort of like a pointer to the file. And Node.js includes an API called stat to read the inode number of a file. Uh, on Linux, the inode numbers are often kind of low. But on Windows, they can sometimes be really high and run into the same kind of rounding issue. So this LSTAT sync, there's actually a reproducible test case where you can create a folder and create a couple of files in that folder which have I know numbers, which uh, one of them ending in 27, but then it rounds up to 28. And another file in the same folder has an I know number in 29, but then it rounds down to the same 28. So if you try to pass those I know numbers back to the system again, it's just not going to work. It's just the wrong number. Um, to get around these kinds of problems, developers have created uh, libraries like bn.js which has millions of downloads every week and gives you an object API for this where you can instantiate a new, a new big num and call methods on it to add or things like that. But there are some limitations here because uh, 
<coughs> it's not as integrated into the system. So if you have something else in the in the standard library or in the web platform or Node, it's not it's not obvious how to how to integrate with this. It's not as optimizable because the JavaScript JIT doesn't know about it. So the JavaScript engine can't uh, use knowledge of mathematics to make it faster. And it's also just an, an extra thing to download and, and integrate, which is difficult in, in some projects. So what if we had this in JavaScript itself? Going back to the original example, uh, where we add one and we get you know, the same number back again, what if we could indicate that we want to, to refer just to integers using a suffix like n? So 2n to the 53n would be the same number, starting with a 9 and ending with a 2. But when you add one into it, you'd get a three at the end. And n here, so the two goes to three. N here stands for big end. Uh, but is this JavaScript? Uh, uh, it is, soon. Uh, big end is at stage three in TC39. And we're adding it to the JavaScript programming language. Uh, actually, it's shipping in Chrome now, as of a few days ago. Big end is shipping in Chrome 67. And in Node master, Begint is also supported. Begint's being developed in uh, Firefox and Safari as well, and it's on the roadmap for Edge. Uh, but who is this TC39, and what are they, what are they doing to, to my JavaScript? So remember, remember ES6? Uh, ES6 gave you nice features like destructuring. So if you have uh, two variables, x and y, you can swap them by putting an array on the left-hand side and just swapping them. And uh, so this and other things like async await were all added by TC39. TC39 is a, is a standards committee that's part of ECMA. And ECMA is this, uh, <coughs> this is standards body based in Geneva, sort of for administrative support. But then we in the committee are JavaScript developers, uh, implementers, you know, people who are making JavaScript work in web browsers and Node and Babel. Uh, framework authors like Angular and Ember and, and React and, and, uh, <coughs> and academics who have a, a background in programming language theory and, and more. And we all get together to produce this document, the ECMAScript language specification. If you were going to print this out, it would be 1,200 pages. It would be, or more than 1,200 pages. Uh, I recommend just looking at the website. Uh, it has these nice searching features. We developed this document on, on GitHub. Uh, it's an open source project like any other with issues and pull requests. And we also, we also develop it at meetings. So here there's a part of an agenda for the meetings. We always seem to run over a little bit on the agenda. But uh, we, we meet every two months for three days. And we talk about the, the activity on GitHub. Well, we also talk about new proposals for extending the language. Uh, and these proposals move through stages. So if, it, if it's a big proposal like, like Begin, we don't just have a pull request against the main spec and start with that. We instead make a separate proposal uh, that goes through these stages. You might have heard of stage one is just a, just a general idea. We're discussing sort of a problem space within the committee. Uh, stage two means that we have an agreed on first draft that TC39 has decided we're going to do something here and uh, it's going to look more or less like this. By stage three, all the details are worked out and we have a complete first specification and it's ready to go off to implementers. And by stage four, uh, we have multiple implementations and lots of feedback from real usage, and so we're ready to just make it part of the actual JavaScript standard. Uh, so how did, how did Begint go through this process? Uh, actually, Begint and or in 64 has been in development for longer than the stage process, and longer than Chrome and Node. Back in 1999, uh, just a few years after JavaScript was created, uh, long and ulong types were proposed. And so these would hold signed or unsigned 64-bit integers. Uh, but they, they never quite made it in. So in ES3, that, that update was mostly expansions to the library, like regular expressions. ES4 was this huge project that also was thinking of adding these types, but it got so complicated it just had to be abandoned. And in ES5, to sort of recover from that, to heal from that process, 
the, the language changes were really minimal uh, and included things like cleaning up the object model and eval and a few other library additions. Then ES6 made, it made a whole bunch of changes such as the, this uh, destructuring assignment that I just mentioned. As part of ES6, the committee was talking about adding value types which would have been user defined, uh, user defined data types, so user defined primitives. You can already define your own objects but there's no way to define your own thing like number as a JavaScript programmer. Uh, and you know, and we're still talking about doing value types but they weren't added in, in ES6. They're deferred until later. So long, long history of, of not, not yet doing larger integers. But then recently, in November 2016, Brendan Eich proposed again to the committee that we do in 64. Rather than coupling it to the whole value type package, uh, in 64 and unsigned in 64 was proposed as a standalone proposal to just add this one new, new primitive type. <clears throat> by, the, by the following January, we settled on actually we want to do this as big int rather than in 64. And I'll talk about the reasons more in a bit. And then by, the, by that July, we got to stage three in the process. And now it's, now it's shipping in Chrome 67. Uh, so let's, let's go over how this went in more detail. So for stage one, uh, the big thing you need for stage one is to have a description of the problem and the, the motivation. So what, what we did in TC39 was create this proposal repository, just a, a GitHub repository, proposal big int, and made a readme file that has some code samples for how it might look, has some motivating use cases, and some ideas for what the semantics would look like. Uh, we also opened a bug tracker in the same repository and invited various community members to participate and give, give opinions about various different semantic points. Uh, so a couple of the big discussions that we went through were big int versus in 64. So I mentioned in the history that much of the time we'd been discussing adding 64 bit integers to the language rather than adding uh, arbitrary size integers. And some of the reasons for that were uh, some people felt like it would be a more minimal addition. So if, if you have a 64 bit integer then it will just overflow or throw an exception when you, when you get out of bounds. Uh, that, that could work for a lot of the applications it works. The whole point of the proposal is to avoid the overflow but you know sometimes 64 bits is enough. And people thought that this would be maybe uh, easier to convince browsers to implement or uh, it might execute faster. But uh, when we talked more with the, with the browsers actually Benedict Moira from, from the V8 team sort of led this effort to reconsider arbitrary size integers. This way you never have to worry about overflow and it actually turns out that the way that modern JavaScript engines work, uh, you, they have machinery for doing all this sort of optimization for uh, working with numbers in particular ranges to convert them to, to integers <coughs> and, and at the same time in 64 wouldn't be that fast without all sorts of optimizations because it has to be allocated in the, in the heap, you have to do all sorts of type checking and to get it to the point where it's actually sort of allocated in registers or on the stack, uh, there's, already, there's already a lot of magic going on. And when that same magic is applied it would work for a big int. So we decided to, you know, bite the bullet, solve the whole problem better and go with big int rather than in 64. Uh, the other big semantic point that we discussed was what to do with mixed types. So in a language like Python, you can just add a, you know, you can just add a large integer and a float and you get a float back. And what, what we decided for JavaScript is we don't actually want to do that. What we're doing instead is, uh, I mean the whole point of big int is to be this new data type that provides this mathematical accuracy. You don't have to think about all the complexity of IEEE 754. You can just think about, uh, you can just think about integers. But what integer would you get when you add a very large integer, 2 to the 53 plus 1.5? the answer isn't actually contained in the set of integers or in the set of representable floating point values. So what we decided is rather than come up with the wrong answer when the whole point of the feature is to come to the right answer, we would throw a type error in this case. 
and we would just say, you know, we're not going to come to an answer. So actually, you can't mix big ints and numbers in general in, in mathematical operations. And this leads to, to a best practice that I'd recommend. Uh, big ints are good when you have a value that ranges that might be larger than what can be represented in numbers, but if numbers are working for you, stick with them. Uh, numbers still work just fine for, for small integers and in general because we have to make this decision up front, it's uh, because of that, that issue I just described, uh, you know, numbers, numbers in use for what they're in use for right now just still works very well. So to get to stage two from there, uh, <coughs> to get to stage two, uh, the committee wrote this, this draft specification document. And this is just like the, the main document for the whole specification except that it's uh, only the segment that, that relates to this new feature. So it includes sort of some insertions and some deletions and some, some new sections, but you can ultimately read it in the same HTML file. And that's generated from uh, this specification format. This was created by, by Brian Turlson and Ron Buckton, this ec markup tool that lets you use a combination of markdown and grammar syntax to uh, easily generate these specification drafts. Uh, my coworker Robin Templeton at, at Igalia also started around this time implementing BigInt in SpiderMonkey, which is currently, you know, starting to land. Um, so even though stage three is when something is really, really ready for implementation and really stable, it's never too early to get started prototyping and this process leads to, helps the development of the future. To get to stage three, we needed sign off on this specification. So in particular, a couple of committee members or, or sometimes more than a couple of committee members volunteer to read the whole specification in a lot of detail as well as the editors and see whether it's ready. So this, this leads to a lot of uh, you know, typos being fixed and cases being looked at closely. Uh, and once we got to this level of stability where the committee signed off and the committee is really saying, yes, we want to do this feature, Stage two is yes, we want to do this feature, and stage three is we want to do it this way, and we really need implementation feedback. So, this level of stability led the V8 team to implement BigInt, and following that, the the um, so you know thank you Jakob Kumaro for for great work leading the the BigInt implementation, and also Kyle Lima worked on BigInt in JSC, which is in progress. Uh, even once we got to stage three, even once we said that we had this level of stability, there were still some edge cases that people came across that because the feature hasn't shipped to the web yet, we were open to, to revisiting. <coughs> so there, there, were, there were tons of different edge cases like this that we spent committee time on before getting to stage three. And then even after stage three, we looked at this one. So you know double equals and, and less than? In JavaScript, you can use them to compare a number and a string. And when you do that, it converts the string to a number and it compares them as numeric values. So, you know, this is part of JavaScript being maybe weakly typed and having all these casts everywhere. And so, to make sure that BigInt is consistent with, uh, to make sure that BigInt is consistent with numbers, we did that same behavior in, in, uh, in BigInt, uh, but we accidentally, in this second case here, we're converting the BigInt to a number and it would compare as, as uh, less than when it's actually the same value because that number would be rounding down. So to get to stage four, what we're going to need is a full test 262 tests. There's a conformance test suite uh, that, that verifies that, uh, <coughs> that implementations are working right, so we have those conformance tests. Uh, a pull request to the main specification to pull this in, well there's still a little bit more refactoring to do for that. And then two implementations where we have one full implementation but the next two are still in progress. So maybe we'll get this by ES2019, we'll see. Or maybe ES2020, I hope so. So uh, to let you know how to get involved, there's there's just a lot of different 
ways to get involved here. Uh, feedback on GitHub issues is really great. I'd love to hear about whether a feature proposal works for you, if there are pieces missing, or if a case should be handled differently. And this was really useful for working through tons of issues with big ends. Uh, test 262 tests. There's this project to implement tests for the JavaScript language itself. And it's an open source project that's happen happy to have new contributions. Uh, what we find is that when something is missing from the test suite, actually uh, different browsers or different JavaScript implementations have different behavior. Uh, because different people end up reading the same specification differently by accident. And so it's, it's really important to have a full test suite. There's other parts, other standards have other tests like web platform tests and we have test 262. And so, for example, here's a pull request to add tests that check that adding a, a number in a big int throws a type error. And in, for the big int project, test 262 helped make implementations correct the first time and stay correct. Sometimes, uh, you know, Maya from the V8 team made a joke to me. Uh, sometimes implementations make so many optimizations that they optimize away the specification itself. And uh, so this helps prevent that, you know. Even as you're maintaining the project, then you still have all these very complete correctness tests. Uh, but it went even further than that because the people working on these tests uh, took a really close look at all the edge cases and helped work through a lot of the design decisions. And then more than six test engineers collaborated, especially engineers from, from Boku and Igalia. Uh, we're, we're also happy to have help on documentation and education. So with this README file, number of people contributed and uh, it's really important to understand the different mental models that JavaScript programmers have. Uh, some, uh, <coughs> you're not, people aren't programming thinking through the entire specification and, and different people have different mental models. So this, this is especially useful. We try to compare a bunch of different ways of thinking through code when designing language features. So for example, in the begin design process, Ashley Williams pointed out that when learning when learning programming, a lot of programmers uh, have an intuition that variables should have particular types. Uh, so this made us feel not quite as bad about not permitting mixed operations between big int and number because this is, this is actually a pretty intuitive thing for people to learn that, you know, a value has a particular type. Uh, it would, it's also welcome to, to implement things so you can contribute to any sort of you know, lots of different implementations of JavaScript. And through implementations, it's not just about getting JavaScript to developers, but every single, all these three implementations of BigInt that are in progress or complete contributed to the, uh, to the design of the feature. It's also possible to, you know, if you're not able to do this development yourself, uh, companies like Bloomberg and Google sponsor, sponsor uh, work to, to push these things forward. And of course, in these meetings, we're open to new members. So, you know, let me know if you want to get involved as a, as a TC39 delegate. Uh, it's an organizational membership, so something like your employer would join, and, or there are also nonprofit memberships. So, as a takeaway, uh, please, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in, in building the future of JavaScript, get involved in TC39. You can go to our website and uh, you know, now you have big ints and use, use big ints for integers which may be very big and use numbers for numbers that are smaller. So I'm Little Dan and, you know, thank you.